These are the faces of Eddie Booth, 36 years old, family man, British and proud of it, supporter of Manchester United, Harold Wilson, still, and British draft beer. But arriving in Australia in search of some corner of the British Empire with a way of life free of British taxes, British weather, and British black faces. A reasonable man who will see the other fellow's point of view, as long as the other fellow admits he's wrong. Miss, are you sure that Flight 107 from London has landed? Yes, sir. Half an hour ago. Well, that's very funny, because I'm supposed to meet somebody off that flight. Look, you haven't got a message for me from a Mr. Eddie Booth, have you? No, sir. And what time's the next flight from London due in? Not until this evening. Oh, I can't hang around here all day. Look, my name's Marley. If Mr. Booth should show up, could you ask him to come out to this address? He's going to work for me. Yes, Mr. Marley. Thank you. I hope nothing's happened to him. <laughs> Is it you? No, drunk. I heard that. Where are we anyway? Australia. Australia? This it? <laughs> I'm not surprised. You know, we didn't even know he was still on board until one of the cleaners found him. He passed out in the forward toilet. <laughs> Good idea, old fella. I was not drunk. I merely nodded off. I was suffering from jet lag. Do you want a taxi? No, I don't. I want a drink. Don't you think you've had enough? No. I'm perfectly capable of standing, thank you very much. <laughs> I think I need a hair of the dog. The bar's that way. John Levy's like he's there. Yeah, hang on, hang on, son. Here we are. Get yourself a drink. English 10p? Keep it. Your need is greater than mine. Please yourself. Come in handy for the cigarette machine. <laughs> There you are. That's 90 cents, thanks. <laughs> oh. And again. Oh, it's good to taste Australian beer again. You've been on holiday? Yeah, I've been to Paris, France. But it's always good to get back home. <laughs> uh. oh, thanks. Is that seat taken? Nope. Is that yours? Name. Oh, yeah. you. Want a drink? Oh, that's very kind of you. I'll have two eats. Look, I'll say how many you have. <laughs> what are you having to drink? Two eats. It's a beer. Oh, oh. Right, come on, then. Do my service. Good girl. Yes, can I get you anything? I'll be excited. <laughs> You'll pardon me if I don't split my sides laughing. I have two of what he's drinking. Bloody good drop, this. That's a funny accent you've got. Yeah, well, I'm from... Uh, but, 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 don't tell me. Don't tell me, because I'm red hot on accents. Now, just say something else. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, it's a real nice day here today in Australia. Got it. Birmingham. <laughs> Sydney. Oh, you're an Aussie. Yeah, Jim Lawson today. Oh, nice to meet you. Eddie Boo. Well, come on, me old sport. It's real beaut to meet a fair dink and Bruce like yourself. Good on you, mate. <laughs> I've got news for you. We don't talk like that here in Australia. Of course you do. I I've seen it on telly. I used to watch Flying Doctor, you know. Flying Doctor. Flying Doctor and a wagga wagga. Come in, sport. <laughs> here you are. Salo. That'll be a dollar eighty. Yes. How much is that in real money? Pardon? Well, I can't understand these dollars and cents, you know. Like bloody monopoly money. <laughs> yeah, love. Right. Well, that's a dollar. Mm. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, love. Give us another couple and have one for yourself this time. Right. Hey, you want to go careful. Australian beer's pretty potent, you know. Oh, yeah, well, uh, you don't know what strong beer is? You know what, son? They've got beer in Manchester you can only get on a doctor's prescription. <laughs> ah, pull the other one. It's true. Tetley's, the fighting man's beer. Eh? Yeah. Cheers. God bless. <laughs> well, what?
What do you think? It's a bit cold, isn't it? <laughs> you plums and your warm beer. There you are. Thanks. So I'll have a... I wonder what they're all doing now. Wonder what he's doing now. The old drinking mates back home. Arthur, Nobby, Jacko. <laughs> Good lads. Do you know what, Sam? When they knew I was coming over here, the committee organised a collection as a token of their appreciation for my 13 years as club secretary. They gave me a cheque. Yeah? How much for? £2.30. <laughs> they thought a lot of you, didn't they? No, 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 no. That was what they had left over after they bought me my present. Here. Hey, take a shifty at that. Oh, that's very nice. Yes, they've inscribed it. Look at it. Hey, To our friend, Edie. Edie! <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, 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 is he? That was Jacko. He never could spell. Come here. <laughs> I suppose you'll miss your friends. Yes. Apart from the chocolate drop. <laughs> the what? My neighbour. He was a nignog. Ah. Mm. You know, that's one of the reasons why I've come to Australia. You don't allow Sambos in. Have you got your family with you? No, no. Hey, I'm going to bit. I'll just show some. Have a look at that, son. Have hey? a shift at that. That is my Joan. Your daughter. <laughs> it's my Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'll send for her when I've got settled. Her and my little lad. Well, all behind me now. What is? My heritage. England. Stands the church clock at ten to three. And is there honey still for tea? What are you talking about? Rupert Brooke. But you said your name was Eddie Booth. Rupert Brooke wrote the poem, you big kangaroo. All right, all right. <laughs> Keep your shirt on. Will I ever hear those immortal words again? Alava. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say that too, Rupert Brooke? No, my friend Jacko. Ah. Lots of people thought he was daft, you know, but not me. I knew he was daft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to worry, Diggy. You'll make new friends. What about me mushy peas? You mushy what? We British gave mushy peas to the world. No wonder you lost the bloody empire. <laughs> Mushy peas are part of our culture. Like black puddings, potted meat and chip butties. Well, it sounds to me as if you'd be better off without them. Uh, what, what I shall miss most of all is the, the temple. What temple? The shrine at Old Trafford. Oh, that's uh, Church of England. No, Church of Manchester United. Ah, <laughs> English football. Not just football. Poetry, emotion. Greatest team in the world, you know. United. Shall I tell you something? If you must. Well, do you know what's going to happen when I die? It'll be a public holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Then. Listen, listen. Listen while I, I tell you. See, when I die, I'm going to be cremated, and I'll have my ashes flown back to Manchester by British Airways. <laughs> They'll be driven to Old Trafford. And after a lap of honour and three choruses of We Are The Champions, they'll be sprinkled all over the penalty area at the Stretford Road end by Sir Matt Busby himself. You know, it strikes me, if you're going to miss so much about England, it's a waste of time you're coming out to Australia. No, 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 I've come to Australia to make my fortune. Oh, and what makes you so sure you're going to earn a fortune? Because I'm British. And we British are superior to everyone. Now, you see, you see, some, with all due respects, you Aussies are not as intelligent as what us British are. Ah, is that so? A fault? Not your fault, it is. So, not a question of breeding. Well, there's nothing wrong with my breeding, mate. You are less intelligent than we British. And I'll prove it. All right, all right, go on, big mouth. <laughs> right. You see some? Help yourself. Thank you. <laughs> no, you see some? It was us British that discovered Australia. I mean, if it hadn't been for Captain Cook, your country would still be floating about the Pacific, overrun with the koala bears. <laughs> now, now we get down to the nitty gritty. I don't think I'm gonna like this. Right. What were your first settlers? Convicts. Correct. All of your cast-offs. Correct again. Here, cop this, cop this. Look at the marks. Leg irons. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know, 
One of your ancestors could have been a murderer. And if you don't shut your big bomby mouth, history is going to repeat itself. <laughs> there you go, getting bloody touchy. I've had just about enough of you. There are too many pommies in Australia. You steal our women, you steal our jobs, and you get me nerves. I hate you. And you're a bloody pommy pofter. <laughs> Excuse me. Where are you going? I am going to sit next to somebody who isn't as bigoted and big-headed as you are. Hey, Ned Kelly. Yeah? <laughs> you forgot your handbag. <laughs> You want another one? Why not, love? Has your friend gone? Yes, yeah, he's got the needle. Very touchy, you foreigners. <laughs> You're the foreigner. The foreigner are you talking about? I'm British. Where are you? Australia. Bloody Nora. I am a foreigner. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm looking for the information desk. Verzeihung, ich kann Sie nicht verstehen. Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Deutsch? Not bloody likely. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, non parlo inglese. Eh, siamo Guardi, italiani, siamo italiani noi, eh? non parliamo affatto inglese. Siamo qui spettando la eh, Siamo italiani. Eh, che c'è di male, scusi. Siamo italiani. Dai, ciao. Non ci piace l'italiano. Siamo italiani. Stiamo aspettando l'aereo. Get the eaters. Excuse me, cop. No, speak English. <laughs> Would you believe it? More bloody foreigners here than in London. Let's be having here. Yup. Anybody in? May I help you, sir? <laughs> One thousand miles to meet another nignog. <laughs> So they didn't let your lot in this country. A few of us have managed to infiltrate. Bloody typical. Why do you stay in your own country, where you belong? Well, if you must know, the reason I left my own country is that there were too many blacks there. Ah, yes. Then what part of the black continent was that? England. <laughs> I thought I'd have anything in common with the Nignog. Now look here, sir. Tell me, are there any messages for me? I'm supposed to be met by Mr. Marley. Is your name Booth, sir? It is. Mr. Marley did leave a message. He said he was sorry, but he couldn't wait. And could you find your way out to his workshop? I would if I knew the address. He left the address here. <laughs> I can't read that. Shout it out. I'll write it down. Marley Engineering. Hang on, hang on. They got me quill out. Right, go on, son. Marley Engineering. Marley Engineering. Wattle Street. Wattle Street. Blacktown. Blacktown. <laughs> Blacktown. Yes, I know we're behind with the thrust washers, but we've had problems, Harry. What with holidays and staff shortages, we'll be back to normal now, so you should be getting some through soon. Yeah, OK. Cheerio. Here's your coffee, Mr. Marley. Oh, thanks, Joyce. And Mr. Booth, the new black from England's arrived. Oh, he's got here, has he? We'll show him in. Oh, and Joyce, bring me a personnel form, would you please? Oh, sorry. Ooh. That's all right, love. I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Booth. Oh. <laughs> Accidents will happen. <laughs> well, sit down. Sit yeah. down. What's your handle? Pardon? Hey, what do you prefer to be called? Oh, Eddie. Eddie, it'll be then. What's your handle? Mr. Marley. <laughs> Mr. Marley, it'll be then. What happened to you at the airport? Oh, I, uh, I was delayed. Yes? Yes, well, you see, uh, there was this old lady... Go on. Bit, she was in a bit of trouble, you see. She had uh, 18 pieces of uh, hand luggage and two trunks. And? And a dog. And what happened then? Well, uh, well, you see, uh, she was going up the escalator, I was going down. See, she was in bother, so I uh, 
It started barking at the dog, not the old lady. <laughs> oh, thanks, Joyce. Thanks, Joyce. <clears throat> Well, we'd better get some personal details down, if you don't mind. Not at all. Now, name, Eddie Booth. Correct. Nationality, British. And proud of it. Sex. Only if the wife doesn't find out. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Butler. Male. Where were you born? Manchester. Manchester. That's in England, isn't it? In England? It is England. <laughs> the capital of the North. Home of the Reds. Reds? Hey, you're not a commo, are you? <laughs> no, no, it's a football team. Manchester United. I see. Address in Australia. I haven't got one. Yes, you have. Joyce is going to put you up. Joyce? My secretary. Oh, the one with the nice big... Blue <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, very nice. Well, now, you must be tired after your long trip. Ah, oh, you know, Mr. Marley, just a, a touch of the old jet lag. Yes, that can be a problem. Well, there's no point in you starting work straight away. You'll need a chance to unpack, get acclimatised, have a look around, see a bit of Sydney. Thank you. Let's see, it's uh, half past three. Well, there's no sense in you coming to work before tomorrow morning, eight o'clock. <laughs> Jim's back. He's just called in on his way home. Oh, good. Ask him to drop in for a minute, would you please, Joyce? You might as well meet your... Uh, Foreman, while you're here. Oh. Come in, Jim. <laughs> Good day, Joe. I can't say it's nice to be back. <laughs> <laughs> you. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> you two know each other? Yeah. We met at the airport. Oh, good. Eddie's bound to feel a bit strange for a start, Jim. I know you'll be happy to straighten him out. It'll be my pleasure. <laughs> and this is the dining room. The kitchen's through there. And this is the lounge room. Yeah. Well, Mr. Booth, do you like what you see? Very nice. It's not very big. No, but nice just the same. Uh, do you feel like a nibble? Pardon? <laughs> Something to eat? Uh, no, I'd prefer a drink. A drink? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, I've got some duty free in my room. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll get it if you like. Right. Hello. Oh, good day, doll. Oh, what a rotten day. Oh, darling, the board is here. Uh, oh, there's no port moaning now. Bernard is here. It's just that I don't like the idea of my wife looking after a boarder, that's all. Bernard, we've been through all this before. The money will come in handy, just till we get on our feet. Oh, I suppose so. Thanks, darling. I'll just go and get some ice and be a minute. All right. Here you are, love. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you must be Mr. Booth. Ed is the name, Squire. I'm Bernard. Oh, nice to meet you. Fancy a drink? Oh, I don't mind, yeah. Oh, cover that one. Do you, uh, do you live here? Yeah. Oh, I was the only one. <sighs> How long have you been here? About six months. Ah. Have you, uh, have you cracked it yet? <laughs> Crack what? Joyce. I don't know what you mean. Have you been there? Been where? Oh, dear, have have you scored. Are you talking about football? <laughs> well, if you think I'm talking about football, you haven't scored. <laughs> now, look, in words of one syllable, we both agree, do we not, that Joyce is a fabulous bit of crumpet? Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, all I'm asking you is, do I stand a chance? Oh, you started without the eyes. Oh, so. Ah. Yes. You've met my husband, then. <laughs> husband? He was just asking me if he stood a chance. A chance of what? Uh, a chance of getting on in Australia. Oh, I'm sure you do. Cheers. Uh, can I have a drink, darling? Certainly, love. <laughs> Get your wife a glass. 
What about your wife, Mr. Booth? No, she won't have a drink. She's in England. <laughs> <laughs> have you got a big family? Just over three foot. <laughs> Mind you, he's only five. Takes after his dad, small but perfectly marked. <laughs> well, welcome to Australia, Mr. Booth. Uh, uh, uh. Eddie, Joyce. Oh, Eddie. Yes. Do you think you'll like it here? I like it anywhere. <laughs> what did he mean? I think it was a joke. Oh, very funny. <laughs> what time do you usually have dinner, Eddie? Oh, I don't mind, dear. You know what they say? When in Rome, I'll just go along with you. OK, well, we'll eat about eight. That'll suit me fine. Do you want to go and unpack first? Uh, no, thanks, dear. No, I'll finish my drink first. They eat a lot of spaghetti, you know. Pardon? In Rome. You haven't got a relation in England called Jacko, have you? <laughs> no, I don't mind. I just wonder. You must be pretty tired after your trip. Would you like to go and have a bar? Why, it's not Friday, is it? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> He's called the sun. <laughs> it's a terrific painting, isn't it? Hmm. It's just that it reminds me of somebody I used to know in England. Oh. <laughs> They're Aborigines. They're the fair dinkum Australians. Oh. That artist paints a lot of Aborigines. Really? I thought they were born that colour. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fancy another drink, Joyce? No, no. I, I better go and get dinner started. Oh, Excuse okay. me. How about you, son? Oh, not for me, thanks. Uh, well, please yourself. Got to say, he who drinks alone, drinks most. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them have got very big ones. <laughs> Pardon? Aborigines. I know a bloke had one three foot long. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask him. <laughs> Tell me, what did he have that was three foot long? A boomerang. Are you sure you haven't got a relation in England culture? <laughs> Positive. I'll get it, Bernard. Oh, that's probably our next door neighbour. He can be a bit of a pest sometimes, but he's not a bad bloke, really. He's not black, is he? Oh, no. Well, in that case, he couldn't possibly be worse than the neighbour I had for six years in England. You want a bet, Bobby? Thy neighbor 